Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Hot Rod Power Tour 2023, day three, here from beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, got ourselves a nice wooded location to park our vehicles last night, hung out with a couple of other little Hot Rod Power Tours, and uh, it's going to be a great day. Today is a complicated day, made more complicated because a viewer costed me as soon as I got it parked in the parking lot yesterday at the show and mentioned something about possibly wanting to buy another AMC AMX. And I didn't say no. So that's going to complicate things today. Um, behind me, 1979 AMC Spirit AMX, 304 V8, now a T55 speed. Originally it was a four speed car. Uh, it's perfect. Everything's great. Everything's uh, Everything works. Nope. Nope. None of the gauges work. Uh, but the car, mechanically, is brilliant. Couldn't find a better car. Um, this is its third power tour. Felt like it was right to bring this thing. Everybody seems to love it, and I absolutely love this thing. The more I drive it, the more I love it. The five-speed swap has made it incredible on the highway runs. Um, it cruises comfortably at plus 70 without a problem. Um, beautiful car. I love it. Carrie's bringing his 1967 Pontiac GTO uh, that we unearthed from his father's driveway uh, about a year and a half ago, and it is... No, about a year ago. A year ago? Yeah, a year and two months. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it sat for a very long time. It's never been on Power Tour before. He's owned this car since he was a youngin, and it's now on Power Tour. Uh, and it's doing well. well. It's not perfect, but it's doing well. It's not well. <laughs> uh, we're already late. Uh, okay. Okay. Is that got a hole in the sidewall? I don't know. We're, I want to jack it up now, right now and find out. You have a tire pump? Uh, I have a pump. I have a jack. I have an impact gun to take the lugs off. I got everything we need. Morning. Welcome to Hot Rod Power Tour 2023. My enthusiasm from just moments ago is waning quickly. See you guys in a bit. Okay. So, sit rep. Um, first off, as Carrie recently just found out, this is not a me problem. This is a you problem. Despite the fact these are my wheels and tires, this is a you problem. But fortunately, Carrie came prepared with all the tools he would need. He's got a jack, he's got an impact, he's got a socket, even has an air pump, even has a functional cigarette lighter. You are fancy. But that means he can figure out what's wrong with his tire. He does also have a plug kit with him. So technically he could even plug this thing if he needed to. Um, also, there's apparently a tire shop right around the corner from here that can get us a brand new Cooper Cobra to be able to put on the back of this thing. So, uh, that's option two. Um, neither of which are my problem. So, um, I'm going to hand off to Kerry and uh, control his camera for a while because this isn't my thing. My car is fine. Still fine. Follow it on Mechanical Advantage Garage on YouTube if you want to see me change a tire in the most awkward way possible in a hotel parking lot. Yeah. Mechanical Advantage. I bet I could go over there and I could start that Pontiac with two pumps and a key turn. And it's just going to... This car? No. My, my AMC. Excuse me. Not my Pontiac. Two pumps and a key turn and it'll fire up. I guarantee it. You want a challenge right now? No. I want you to pull a tire off because we're already late. Well, here's my camera. Leave it at the 5-setter. YouTubers, I tell you. What, are you throwing away my bottles? Yes. You are not Grizzly Adams, and you are not storing pee in them like Howard Hughes. So, how am I going to know how much fluids I've had? I 
I'll tell you what, he, he, he gets in my car and he just thinks he owns the place. Unbelievable. So the AMX is going to save the day again because it's, of course, the most reliable, most amazing machine ever created. Uh, we've got his, spe or his well, I, his, I say his, my tire in the back that he destroyed. Uh, and there's a tire shop down the street. So I'm going to go get that done. And then get back here and then get on the road. But maybe a tire going bad saved me from buying a car. So maybe it's a good thing. Or maybe it doesn't save me from buying a car. And trying to still figure out how to tell Rich about this. Because he's not going to be happy. Hey, hey Carrie. This, hey. This feels snug. Yeah. And, and familiar at the same time. It does. We did this before. Yeah. We did. A long time ago. All right. Oh, here we go. See you at the tire shop. Oh, it's not perfect. Austin's trying to show off that his car. It's because we're on a. Mind. It's because we're on a hill. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's because we're on a hill. Uh, do you have any other? See, it failed to start first. Yeah. See, before, it's fine. It's because we were on a hill, so it leaked back a little bit. Sure. Damn it! I hate that your car sounds. I hate that your car sounds better than mine. Dude, it sounds so good. It does, doesn't it? For an AMC 304, it sounds so good. Right. Fifteen minutes. We're in the industry. We can't get tires in fifteen minutes. A 275 6015. This dude had in 15 minutes. Brand new, Coop Cobra. Oh, it's sticky too. Peaks Auto Tire. This guy's been doing this for 50 years. Had a tire in 15 minutes. Bing, bang, boom, swap that thing out. Let's get back over to the hotel, get it swapped back out, and get on the road. Hot Rod Power Tour 2023 is not anywhere near done. Okay. Don't you worry about it, it's fine. Close enough for government work. Yeah, all right, baby. Get back in the trust, he never failed. Everything's perfect. Hey, Max. Jinxing this car. Nope. 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 You're just gonna rub it in my face this yep. whole trip. Yep. You know what? This didn't start like that when you pulled it out six after it was sitting for how long? You had to like rebuild it. Oh yeah, I mean the car, whole car's rebuilt, yeah. Yeah, my car's not rebuilt. <laughs> My car, we pulled it out after a 16 year hibernation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starts and runs the way it is with nothing done to the edge. Yeah, yeah. Literally yeah. nothing done to that edge. Right. Trannies right. new, but the engine, nothing. You know what? Uh, the Dukes of Hazard, um, not a documentary, it <laughs> turns out. You cannot make an old 60s muscle car fly and expect it to survive the ship at all. Like, 
a par five away from the hotel. Yeah. We're already back at the hotel. Par five? Par four. Are we still going to look at a car? I don't think so. Okay. Well, we promised shenanigans. There have been yeah, shenanigans. Correct, yes. The wrong shenanigans. But right. this way, I'm not spending any more money. True. Okay, we're back at the hotel. All right. There you go. This is yours. For those of you who are wondering, I have no idea if I've got enough oil. I have no idea if I've got enough coolant. I'm not going to look at any of that stuff because I'm a uh, avoid it and it won't be a problem kind of guy. The AMX continues to soldier on and it will continue to soldier on. Pontiac is back in one piece. Uh, huge thanks to those guys. Massive, massive, massive thanks to those guys. Getting a tire immediately, getting it swapped out. The, the, it, it, that's just fortuitous how things work out. It was, I don't know, quarter of a mile away from here and the guy had the tire in instantaneously. As soon as we got there, showed up, bang, broke it down, got it mounted, ready to rock and roll. So uh, I think we're gonna just go for the uh, blast to Rockingham. Or you wanna do some of the, tur the twisty turny part? Well, it's four hours if we do the twisty turny part, so we'll get there at like three, three. four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, and if we hustle, we can probably catch the back of the pack. Okay. Uh, or we can just get there and get there in two hours. Right. And then that's which is the one and that gives us time to walk around. So it's up to you. I think we just blast there. Alright. Plus we have rain incoming. Yes, that is This is definitely the airport hotel. All right, folks, let's get on the road, shall we? Get this journey actually started for the day. It's just gonna fire right up. Nothing to worry about. It just works, baby, it just works. Such a good little car. Route, uh, which would put us there right at 4:35 o'clock, which is when the show basically ends. So, 
going to take the judgment call and just hightail it on the interstate. Don't know who else we'll see. I'm sure there's other people that are in similar situations. I was thinking you were just burning off like maybe you overfilled it. But oh no, I don't have enough to overfill it. It also would have... The uh, dipstick was a quarter of the way, so it was about that much out. Oh. So... Maybe it was the uh, dipstick. Or are you overpressurizing and it pushed the dipstick out? That could be. Yeah, here it comes. This is where I spilled a ton of ATF on. Yeah. Alright. So, I guess it's just ATF. Keep pushing? I'm going to pick up a quart of oil just in case. Okay. And then we'll keep pushing. The good news is we're seeing a lot of power people on the left. 
apparently when he was filling the trans back up, he missed a hole with a bit of it. And we're thinking that's what we're seeing. It certainly smells like ATF. And it's coming from underneath the car, not out the pipes. So, um, we're going to just keep driving and pretend like it didn't happen. And hopefully it'll clear itself up. That's an excellent way to fix things in the automotive world, by the way. Uh, he's got to pick up a quart of oil just to be on the safe side. It did have the dipstick slightly out. Um, now, the question is going to be whether or not he remembered to set the dipstick all the way to the base or if he's got a pressurization issue and it pushed the dipstick out. Um, we are worried that there is a PCV issue and that he's possibly making some extra crankcase pressure, which is pushing oil out the valve covers, which we know is also an issue. So, we'll see. But, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We've made it 20 miles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just have to watch that smoke. Make sure it doesn't get worse. Make sure it goes away. Nice talking with you, sir. Blake came over and was talking to us. Had a moment to talk for a little bit. And he's apparently a, a fan of 1967 Impala four doors from the show Supernatural. Uh, I hate to inform you all, but I do actually have one of those as a project that's sitting behind the shop that I have completely neglected for like two years. I should probably get on that. I was supposed to, I did actually promise on Power Tour last year that I would get that car assembled and ready to go. And I completely, totally did not touch it. So maybe this will motivate me to get on it. Oh. Um, high point of the gas station stop. Yes.
probably going to need to stop for fuel. I don't know. I don't have functional gauges. Yeah, in case you didn't notice that, and if I didn't mention it on this video, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That's not accurate. That doesn't work. And that doesn't work. No functional gauges. So, I just generally drive until carry is low on fuel, and then we stop for gas. Should have probably just gotten at the gas station. Whatever. We were too concerned with things like 
my beard from smacking me in my eyeballs. Just tuck it into my shirt. Nine gallons got me back up and running. Um, no idea, fuel economy wise. I'm sure it was pretty decent. It's just been backcountry roads, mostly fourth gear, some fifth gear. Amex is doing just fine. I was thinking about maybe checking fluids on the thing, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's time yet. But she's doing good. We're happy with her. No big deals. Um, it would be nice if I had my earbuds. Feel bad that I lost that. That's about it. Uh, Carrie's checking his fluids, making sure everything's good on that. Um, he's a little concerned about uh, transmission fluid leak. He may or may not have... Uh, mm -hmm. That car a little while ago. Uh, and instigated a little bit of a leak from the transpan. Um, and we are definitely sure that what happened with the fluid, with the smoke was him overfilling or spilling the uh, ATF so 
everything else seems like it's in good shape. Um, we are about 30 or a little less than 30 miles from the actual racetrack. Uh, have seen a couple of uh, power tourers around here. And on my social medias, I'm seeing several of uh, our YouTube people haven't made it there yet either. So we're not terribly, terribly late. Um, not real hungry. I was thinking about maybe getting some Hardee's, but nah. I already had some ice cream. So we're going to get on the road here in a minute. And we'll finish off this thing and we'll get ourselves to Rockingham finally. But, you know, nice little leisurely drive. It's actually, God, the weather here is, this is perfect. Compared to last year and the year before, whew, I'll take this. Every year we could do this. Low 80s, nice and breezy. See them beard. It's wonderful. Wonderful.
about five miles from the track, and I don't know if you can see this, but there is a long line of hot rods in front of us. Unfortunately, there's also this Lexus in front of us, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we're in the pack again. Unfortunately, we finally got into the pack probably five miles from the track, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, look at this big line of hot rods right here. too easy and smooth we got to get into some crazy traffic it's not going to be a power tour if you don't sit there and worry about overheating your car oh what time is it 2 10. i'm tired editing videos after a long day is an exceptionally long day on a hill too. Oh, this is a really long hill. Alright, we'll pick up the story when we get inside, or at least up to the gate. You don't need to see me sitting back here complaining. Ah! watch my day one video by the way uh, do apologize for me complaining for the first 30 minutes of the video um, but it's honest <laughs> and I don't want to give an honest experience about what it's like to go on power tour and honestly the lines are very frustrating hopefully you got that out of what I was trying to give it in front of us. I'm starting to get vapor lock in the goat. That's always a fun thing. Um, it's not a true vapor lock in that it stops all fueling, but it does like taper off the fueling a little bit when we're slow at idle. Just the heat builds up and it just starts boiling the fuel in the line and then, you know, that happens. So, um, all right, we're stopped. I'm going to shut it down for a minute. And, oh, that was nice. It took only a well, I guess we are like stop and go, stop and go. Every time I shut it off, I have to restart the car. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe it's just a small crawl. Who knows? This is usually the part where Austin starts ranting about how can they not fix this? And you know what? I have to agree with them. Like these, these venues, like we've been to venues where they just shuttle us right in. And we've been to venues where you sit in a long line and every car overheats on the way in. I don't know. Uh, the NASCAR tracks always seem to be the ones that give us the problems too. It's, uh, you know, like Atlanta Speedway was a NASCAR track. Problem. Uh, Rockingham, NASCAR track, kind of a long line. Uh, you know, yesterday we were at the state fairgrounds. Now, state fairgrounds, they're used to handling, like, big volumes of people and big volumes of vehicles coming in. We had no problem getting into that. We were, like, full solid and moving that whole time. 
you know, it's only like the NASCAR tracks they, they tend to like close down the gate. And I guess they're used to handling big volumes of people, but maybe not big volumes of cars into their facility because they have they have outer parking lots and you know we're not going to the outer parking lots we're going into the inner facilities so they're the ones that create all these staging and all this and all that to handle flow and they end up just overheating a bunch of old cars because i don't think they really think about it right you know they're expecting people to show up with good perfectly running cars and although the goat has been great this trip I wouldn't call it a good, perfectly running car. It has its foibles, it has its issues, you know. They're not major issues. None of these issues that we've had so far, except for the flat tire, have kept us from driving the car from place to place. Even the smoke, as nervous as it made me, uh, because I spilled a quart of ATF on the exhaust header, um, and then proceeded to spray for mosquitoes in three counties, uh, even that didn't make me like, crazy about stopping to drive the car. I stopped to check it. I said, okay, that's what it is. Let's keep going. I checked the fluid at the gas stop. You know what? We're still good on fluids. We still have fluids in the car. So yeah, the car's got issues, but you know, just trying to, uh, to handle it. I just don't know why these NASCAR tracks can't get it together. You would figure a automotive specific vendor would know how to handle an automotive event. But I don't know. You know, and, and I'm not taking, like, to task any of the individual people. Uh, this is hard work. Events are, putting events like this together are hard work. I used to do this for motorcycles all the time. And, you know, putting them together was always a, a, a big challenge. It was always a huge amount of work to, to make um, motorcycles happen. You know, like big motorcycle shows and, and all that. It was permits and this and that and all the other stuff. So, um, I don't know why, you know, I, like I'm, I'm not trying to, so I'm not trying to say, single out any one individual and say, hey, you know what, employees of Rockingham, employees of Atlanta, employees of, you know, Tennessee or whoever it was uh, last year that overheated all those cars and made them skip an event. Um, I'm not saying you're doing a bad job, but, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this. You got to maybe evaluate and take your audience into consideration. You know, because uh, let's face it, this, you know, I don't like sweating in this car. I don't like sitting here in traffic, shutting it off, having to shut it off because I'm worried about the engine block melting down. I don't like that stuff, right? I, I like being in the event. I like being there. I like spending money at your venue. You know, you guys run concessions here. Like, don't you want us? I know you do. My money's green. It's spendy. It folds. You know? It don't jingle jangle. It folds. Fold it. Put it in your pocket. Sell me a hot dog. Sell me a cold drink. God knows I need one after this car. So, yeah. Now I've, I've done an Austin-style rant, and he's probably not going to use any of it. A lot of YouTube is a hustle trying to get your likes trying to get your views trying to get your subscribers it's a hustle right we all make money off this stuff we try to get as many eyes as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can makes us money pays our bills right it's fun because you know we get to take you guys along but in the end of the day it pays our bills it helps build a business or it could even become its own business I will say this man has got the hustle he is standing out here in the sunlight in a hot day in North Carolina with a subscribe to my YouTube channel shirt on. There you go, buddy. I give you my little boom. Good luck. sir I appreciate your hustle my man's even passing out flyers <laughs> Let me know. I haven't made a chance to go look 
look at it. Let me know. Is, is this content any good? <laughs> they ran they ran out of gas right before getting into the event. That's rough. <laughs> uh Freiburger Dulcich. Well we made it. We are officially at Rockingham. Uh, kind of. We are uh, out in the yard. There's a bunch of people going that way. And a bunch of us going this way. So we're not anywhere actually. I mean, we're, I guess we're technically here, right? You have to walk into the Rockingham. Interesting. I would have thought they would have. All right, well, whatever. So we're gonna have a car show out here in the parking lot. That's cool. Be with you in a minute. Let me get parked up. We made it! We made it! <laughs> Feels amazing. It? Little AMC did beautifully. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for? Is it the best? Is it the best car? Is it? I mean, I ask you, is it? Because it could be. Could be. Okay, so here's something. That's a. See that over there? Remember the Judge Challenger from yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In front of him is a 69 Camaro built on a 50 Camaro. See the windshield rate? Yeah. How weird is that? Well, I said that I was going to be a nobody this week, and I'm not going to pull any VIP cards. And this is about as not VIP as it gets. Uh, I am out here in the middle of nowhere. With Carrie, of course. We're both motored, of course. But we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and nowhere near the show. Nowhere near the any of the stuff. All that's up that way. Uh, but we're made it. We're here. We're going to do our best to walk the line and show some stuff off. Uh, see else who, who else is out here in the back 40. <laughs> Whatever, we made it here, that's what's important. Welcome to The Rock. Well, I mean, technically The Rock is over there. We'll get you there. Right? How's, uh, how's your new tire working out? Oh, the tire's doing great. The rest of the car, it's okay. <laughs> the tire's doing great. The tire's great, all right. Oh, thank you. That's Mercury, isn't that great? I always like the way those cars looked. I think they put me in Pontiac Park. There's a Turbo Trans Am. There's another Trans Am in front of Austin. There's a 67 Le Mans there. There's a GTO Trans Am. And my GOAT. And my GTO. So, yeah. Oh, and a 68 Firebird over there. And there's a 68 Firebird hidden over there somewhere. So, yeah. I guess I'm in uh, uh, Pontiac Park. Woo! I have questions. Turbo Trans Am. Turbo Trans Am. You know, uh, it's a 1980. Years ago, I uh, I went out with this girl who owned one of these, and I think she bought it for like five or eight hundred bucks because they were just unwanted cars in the 90s. But they do have one of the coolest features, and that is the digital turbocharge meter for low, medium, and high boost. Uh, the hood blister is basically just to clear the, uh, the turbo intake. These are not intercooled turbos by any means. They don't make a lot of power, and I think they're 301 uh, engines, 301 cubic inch engines with a turbocharger on them. Uh, Pontiac trying to be Buick, but not using any of Buick's parts. So. Uh, real interesting cars, real pretty cars too. Um, love the wheels on them. 
you know, I think they were specific just to this car, but uh, not very fast cars. But you know, that was the era that we were in. So uh, now I think these things are a fortune, but back then they were a dime a dozen. That is paint. That is not actual trim. I do love the fast hot rod wagon. That's freaking cool. Very cool. Custom wagon. Very, very cool. So somebody brought a JDM K truck to Power Tour. I don't know how this guy is doing because I don't think these things go over 55 miles an hour. And it's four-wheel drive too. And it's right-hand drive. Uh, and it's tiny because to give you an idea of scale for this, here is a Dodge Challenger. And I know Dodge Challengers are kind of big cars, but look at it, it's tiny compared, comparatively speaking. I mean, the steering wheel looks big in it. Like, it is fascinating. Um, I could probably pick up the rear end on this. I'm not gonna try, because that would be mean to him, but um, yeah, look, it is a Subaru. He's got a huge tack on it too. I love it. <laughs> I love every bit of this. Uh, cargo net, hauling everything you need. Looks like he's camping too, because there's tents in here. And he came from Michigan. I can't even imagine this on the uh, highway. Subaru Sambar K truck, and that's KEI. It's the class of vehicle in Japan. Uh, these are like micro cars. Um, so if you've ever seen like an AutoZam or a, a Suzuki Cappuccino or something like that, if you watch Initial D, you'll know what those things are. If you don't, then I'm not speaking your language. But uh, <laughs> this thing is so cool. Uh, this is either awesome or terrible. One of the two. Oh, he was on 2019. Uh, it's a um, LS swap. Okay, so it's probably awesome. Yeah. And comfortable. Yeah. Room, efficiency, probably has cooling. Oh, he's from New York, too. So he drove this from... Uh... Uh, I love it. Talk about a wonderful idea. I mean, you could basically... You don't even need a hotel room. You just chill in this. Oh, and he has a bed in the back. I love it. Yeah! Laid back since way back. I love it, dude. That's fantastic. What a great idea for a power tour car. I am totally going to creep out your living quarters here, bud. Oh, nice. I love it. He's mapped out his roots on the, on the wall, on the map. Very cool. Fantastic. I like yeah, what you're doing a, here, sir. He's got an eating table in the center and a bed on the left side. I like what you're doing here, sir. I like what you're doing here. Now, here is one of the most fortuitous things you could ever possibly imagine. Out of 6,000 cars on property, probably, yeah. what are the chances we would be two lanes of traffic and 30 cars away from? That. So, uh, 
I mean, other than the fact that it's way, way, way nicer than mine. What do you guys think? Because this is uh, kind of inspirational for what we're looking at to do with our uh, Hellcat powered one. With kind of a pro touring setup on it. Uh, put it low, put a nasty motor under the hood, make it turn, stop, do all those things. He auto crosses this car. Uh, if I am, and I believe I am, correct, it has a 401 AMC in it, uh, a rather healthy one. This is, uh, this, this, this is, uh, yeah. I love it. What do you guys think? Hellcat under the hood. Or, or, does it make more sense? Do people want to see more? Instead of doing a Hellcat swap, does it make more sense to do a pro-charged AMC 360 in it? Does that make more sense? Would that be more interesting and attractive to people? If so, maybe we'll do that. But, I love this. Like, the whole thing. I love it. This brake conversion on all four corners. I love the stance of it. It's gorgeous. I'm going to shut up and show you the car. Spot of this. Practice your Queen's Wave. Very nice truck. That's Solomon of uh, the Ford era. Very, very nice truck. The man has a lot of trucks. A lot of trucks. We don't want to talk about exactly how many vehicles he has. I'm not actually sure we're allowed to talk about how many vehicles probably get him in trouble, but he has a lot of vehicles. Holiday So, I don't know if you guys are much a fan of this uh, National Lampoon's Vacation as I am, but this is the family truckster, or at least a reasonable facsimile thereof, because I don't think it has the rear window uh, treatment that they did for the movie. But it does have the Wally World decal and the Luke Lutz Motors uh, license plate down here. Uh, and he drove it from Texas. Oh, and the dog leash. Oh my god. <laughs> I uh, I can't believe it. This is so cool. Wait, does it have the, the weird four eye front end? Uh, let's see if it does. The stacked weirdo headlights. Oh, it totally does. It totally does. Although it still has a Ford emblem on the grill, and I don't remember if it was a Ford in the movie. Um, I think it was like the Kingswood family trucks. Uh, what a neat little car, huh? Well, not little, it's massive. Um, but yeah, how cool is that?
that's the thing about power tours sometimes it's the stuff dreams are made of like look at how nice this 67 gto is oh my god it's gorgeous i wish my car was this nice i mean maybe it'll get there i don't know but this is a real truly pretty car oh and it's a bench seat car too how rare People don't realize this, but you could actually get a bench seat with a GTO, uh, and this car has it. So let's go take a look real quick. I mean, I'm getting a lot of reflection here, but yeah, look at that. A bench seat with an armrest. Too cool. Too cool. Someday, my, my car won't even be half as nice as that. Cool trucks, check. Hot rod, check. Bad looking GTO on bags, check. Everything, it's all here. Miata sound odd to you. Hey, so many people think I'm you. <laughs> I was gonna say, I like your look, sir. I just got this hat. And I was going to start faking your identity. <laughs> Go for it. There could be more than one of me. How's it going, man? How are you? Good. We just watched your video yesterday. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm Thank Mark, you. man. Austin. Very nice to meet you guys. I, I started telling my buddy name. Like, yeah, I wanted to take the dragon's tail, but I didn't. <laughs> and he, he doesn't know much about cars. Let me. I mean, yeah. I was like, <laughs> like we can't cook a brisket on our... <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna the fresh condition. You know, the, the best thing is like, remember Nashville last year, how it was like ridiculous line like this? Oh, yeah, yeah. We said, screw it. Yeah. And, we, and in your video, you see our, our yellow Camaro just driving out. Because like, <laughs> we were trying to find pictures of where we are. We're like, oh, we're in this video. Yeah. We stopped the YouTube video and took a picture of that. <laughs> here I am, right I'm there. Like, right that's famous. my car. For this two seconds, I'm famous right here. <laughs> So you guys drove a Camaro? We did. What'd you drive? What it's a 74. 74 Camaro, all right. Anything interesting done to it? Can I see it from here? Uh, you cannot see it from here, but you can go check it out later. We'll let you. Are you parked out in BFE with us? Yeah. We're, we're normal people. Yes. I'm a normal guy. Regular, Nobody regular knows who I am. Right. Well, they must know who we are. Cause, yeah, because a lot of people really <laughs> Actually, someone at the hotel is like, all right, stay safe out there. I'm like, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> So well, I just, I'm just gonna stay. Hey, you I'll know what? You go find me if you go video. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say every you. dollar I've got in my pocket. Oh hell! I got more change in my pocket. Than probably got a dollar. I promise you, Actually, you do. Actually, he's the imposter. I, I'd have to pay you. <laughs> he's like, yeah. How much is he gonna pay you? Yeah, oh, here's the question. Um, uh, he, he go tell me he just flat broke right now. Probably. He's cosplaying as me today. Well, I'm not flat, but I am broke. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we have to get a picture. I love it. Hey, 
guys. If you haven't watched my day one video, day one video, day two video, if you watch my day two video. This is the gentleman that we ran into at a QT gas station. That happens to be an electrical engineer. He's been on 15 power tours. He bought that Mustang as a kid. He has had that his entire life. Super cool dude. Awesome dude. Here is a Roadrunner, and it looks like they did not make it. That looks like a U-Haul truck with a trailer, and uh, but one cool thing is, um, and I'm wondering if it is real, is it does have Hemi callouts on the hood. So I'm wondering if it actually is uh, a Hemi Roadrunner, which would make it an incredibly rare car. But here's the thing, this car is way nicer than mine. So how did he not make it an idea? I don't know. Um, I think it's just all about trying. I, I'm not saying he's bad at fixing stuff or whatever. You know, it's hard to get parts for old cars. It's hard to prep them. Uh, sometimes doing this, you're just sort of rolling the dice and taking your chances. And, and for us, we've been rolling the dice and sort of winning for the last uh, couple of days. Um, we did it in 2021 with the AMX. It was an untested car. We rolled the dice and, you know, took our chances. And it broke down a couple of times, especially with the alternator issue. But it saved somebody's life, too, and it gave us great stories. So don't feel bad if you don't make it, you know, if your car breaks down and you can't fix it on power tour. This stuff happens. It's hard. This is not an easy event. People think, oh, it's just a car cruise in, and then you drive it to the next place and it's a car cruise in. No, it is grueling. It is hot. This is tough to do. Kudos to you, man, for renting a U-Haul and a trailer and pulling your car. Because uh, it looks like you made it in 2018, because I see a long haul plate on there. So, um, good for you. You know, I'm glad you're still in it. But I take it I take it back. It's not a Roadrunner, it's a GTX. I just want to call this out. Look how tiny the steering wheel is. It is like, it's a dragster steering wheel. Like a, a rail dragster steering wheel. Not a big one. So I hope he has power steering. But, uh, yeah, it's got satellite callouts on the front fenders and a GTX tail panel right here. So it's not a Roadrunner, it's something else. But uh, speaking of GTXs, look at this bad boy right here. Uh, looks like a wedge motor with a blower on it. Uh, unbelievably cool. So, all right, now I gotta go find Austin because I seem to have lost him. Now, welcome to Rocket Camp. So everybody knows that Mopar has like great color names for the things like Go Mango, Go Mango, and Top Banana, and uh, Sublime, and all that. But the joke has always been that Plum Crazy was uh, once called Statutory Grape, and this guy has leaned into it. Uh, it was supposed it's a legend, it's a rejected name for this color. But uh, good for you for putting it on the back. I mean, it's a terrible joke in poor taste, but I. What a great color for this car, too. Yeah. And speaking of purple, here is a uh, Charger, same purple, in uh, Plum Crazy or in Violet. I think it was uh, one had one was Plymouth, one was Dodge. It's the same color. What a good look.
Close the dang enough. Nice, sir. Nice, sir. That's a pretty, pretty stock, pretty original truck. Very nice. I like it a lot, sir. I, uh, I am envious of your ability to have interior storage uh, because my Cyclone does not have the ability to store anything in it or be able to do anything useful with it. It's just cool. But I like it. Still has the original turbo on it. Still has the air water intercooler on it. That is impressive, sir. Very nice. So really nice uh, Crown Vic LTD with some huge, huge tires on the rear, but uh, also LS swap. So I guess uh, LS swap the world is real, huh? I mean, I would have preferred to see a Coyote in there too, especially since I think these have five liters in them, so there's space to put a Coyote or a six in there, but you know, LS motors, they make sense. Put a Vortex supercharger on it. I could hear that breathing when you pulled in. Yeah. Water, water cooler, water meth injection. Okay. I got, got a booster pump plus the Magnavolt to boost the voltage to yeah. stock uh, fuel pump as well as the booster pump. How much, how much boost are you running? Yeah, it gets about eight. Eight? Okay. Yeah, and the stock pump will handle it? Yeah, well, with the booster pump. Wow. And the boosting voltage. Okay. It's probably pretty marginal. But, yeah. yeah. In fact, I had, I replaced the original pump with another one, yeah. and it wasn't enough. Gotcha. So I shopped for replacement pumps that were the highest rated on the low. Gotcha. And, and bought that and dropped it in the box. Gotcha. Okay. It's a, it's a the max output stock Stock pump? Yeah. This is cool. That's, yeah. This probably flies below the radar pretty easily, too. Yeah. Nobody expects to get their ass kicked by an avalanche. You made it. Yeah. You were fixing this in our hotel parking lot. Uh, oh, you know. well, it was just the AC. Oh, is that what oh. it was? So the problem was, I, I, I tapped the uh, wire for the AC compressor uh, oh, clutch. Yeah. Because this fan on this side, so I, I retrofitted an 05 GM fans. Mm -hmm. The fan on this side kicks in high whenever the AC compressor's on. But it, where I tapped in, it's below this intake for the supercharger. Right. So to get to where I where it was, and it had melted to the exhaust header. So to get to it, I had to pull off some of the supercharger plumbing. But other, yeah, so easy fix. Once I, I isolated, everything worked fine. So I wrapped electrical tape, keep it away from the header, but then put everything back together. That was, That's that was the hard thing, part. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Now I remember fine. when we showed up, you were working on it. Okay. Rod. There are few cars in this world that are more attractive than FDR X7. If you don't agree with that, that's your problem. These cars are stunning. I love it. Tastefully modified, still rotary powered. 
big single turbo, but I like it. Very cool. Glad this came out. Came all the way from Pennsylvania. Very, very cool. Probably doesn't get a whole lot of love here with all the muscle car folks, but very cool. So what was plan A? Um, um, 72 Chevrolet truck. What happened? I didn't have time to get things. It's been sitting for a while uh, with my Java, and I finally quit work a few weeks ago, but it still lacked a few things. been sitting up, and the gas went bad and stuff like that. Gotcha. And I didn't want to take a chance to be by myself and take the whole thing. So Understood. I, I, I robbed this one. You did the smart choice. <laughs> yeah, at least I'd be able to go. Yeah. It was either walk or, yeah. or get something dependable that I could go and. So, I get it. I get it. Uh, we'll bring it next year. Yeah. Next year I'm going to have a plan A and, the, and, and even plan B is going to be a cool car. So, <laughs> uh, Sounds like a plan. We'll see ya. Right, thank you. Nice ride, gentlemen. The original 400 in it. This is a this is a rowdy little sleeper. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Most people would walk past this and be like, no big deal. Like, wait a second. I like this. How long you had this? About three years. Okay. Very cool. Very cool car. Do you have air conditioning? Yeah. How cool is that for a sleeper? Yeah! Mr. Bill, check that out! Three forty Cuda. Very nice. Very nice. From Ohio. This is such the great decision is take a huge, nice, comfortable car. <laughs> yeah, uh. So good. The flames, beautiful. That is a gorgeous car. I do love that the four-door hot rod thing is kind of becoming more of a thing. Like, this would have been nobody's, nobody wants it kind of vehicle. But it's cool, man. You can make it cool. Although we also have screwed up the proper, or the values of a lot of this stuff because we've bought all the cool little two-doors. But very cool. Something you don't ever see either. Most people didn't save these cars. Yep. But they made these the bigger spots all over. Yeah. Well, they split like the right lane. They just split into. Everybody go over there and park in the middle of nowhere. The left lane is a whole bunch of just whatever. Got it here. Uh, here we go. Oh, the top of the well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. It's a good one, man. Appreciate that. I saw it last year when it was so high. Oh, God, last year was rough. When you were getting ready to come down, all that. So, you saw my, my day zero video when I was coming down from... Yeah, from yeah, yeah. So, my day one video went up this morning at midnight. Oh, it is? My day two video goes up at 6 o'clock tonight because the internet access at our hotel was horrible. Oh, okay. So well, We were behind you last year when you were doing the barbecue. And <laughs> you had your sandwich on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that actually was really tasty still. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where are you in Memphis? That's where I'm from, Memphis area. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. We'll see you guys. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. All right. You know, I'll probably Go do some ranching. Yeah. Hopefully not much. Hand him the wrench. Make him work. They don't have child labor laws here. I'll make him gap the plug. There you go. <laughs> see you guys.
Nice shirt, by the way. That's all right. That's all right. Where are you guys staying? The uh, in Charlotte, we got some family there. Okay. So uh, get it. Uh, get it with them. I'm wonderful. How are you? Good, good. We were watching you ride down the other day on YouTube. I appreciate yeah, that. I appreciate it. I love the picture. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, we met last year. Yeah, absolutely. I remember you. Cool cars as far as the eye can see. What flavor would you like? They have it here. I don't know how much of this you guys are going to be able to hear because it's extremely windy down here in the morning. That's a Queen Silverado. That's really nice. Very nice. I don't know how much you can hear. It's very windy down here in the bowl. Uh, and there's also some rain that's starting to roll in, so a lot of people are rolling out of here. Uh, the trick is, if you got VIP, you're down in here, and it's hard to get out. One lane road to get out. How you doing? How you doing? Good, sir. You have air conditioning? Yep. Oh, it's not fair. I know it's one of the modern ones. <laughs> what? One of those modern creature comforts. Yeah. What all you got done to this thing? Uh, the only thing factory is the glass. The only thing factory is the glass. Yes, sir. So it's built engine, transmission, rear end. Um, I bought it in 2007, and it had 49,000 original miles on it. It's 1998. It's a one-year or one-year color. The guy knocked up his wife and traded it in for a suburban. <laughs> and I just put my 18th inspection sticker on it. All the way from Fort Worth, Texas. That's awesome. Good for you. That's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. I love these things. I actually almost I almost bought one of these in this exact same color in 98. Yeah. It's a gorgeous car. Thank you, man. And you drive the hell out of it. Yes, sir. That's what it's for. Good for you. Four. And it's got how many miles on it now? Um, 114? In 2011, the gear broke at 114, 634. So it's got, it's got about half a million original paint, too, except for the aftermarket stuff. That's fantastic. All right. That's Good that's for you, man. Fun. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that out. Take care. What's up, man? You guys survived. We're, we're still alive. How are you guys? Good, yo. Yeah. This was uh, part of our wagon train that got lost. We did. Yeah, well, well maybe not got train. lost. Got delayed and then we took off. Right, right. You got the heavier foot. Uh, carry. Oh, yeah, carry. Okay. Carry, carry. 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 And a scarf man. I uh, did include some of that in my video from day two. Did. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was a... It wasn't a race. It was just two guys accelerating together in their vehicle. Yes, off of the red light. No, it was green. From what I saw, it was absolutely green. Yes. So yes. you guys were just accelerating side by side, yep. filming each other. It was yeah. nothing that was wrong. That's the funny part. I was looking at him with my camera. He was looking at me with his camera. Yeah, and, and like, I'm behind you filming with you. Right, right. <laughs> That's what happens when YouTubers get together. Yes. We all have yes. cameras. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Everything make it okay today? Yeah, we didn't have any issues. So Good. it's not like you guys had a flat to deal with. Yeah, morning. that's how we started our day. That was super fun. Which the nice thing is the fact that we had a flat this morning because the plan was I was going to get in the car and we were going to drive an hour the wrong direction oh, to go buy a car. Go to the AMX and find that. Yeah. yeah. So when he had a flat tire, I didn't have to go do that oh. because that ate up all of our extra time. So right, right. I didn't have to go buy a car. Now, I'm not saying I'm not buying a car. 
just saying I didn't buy the car. Right, that one. Yeah, that that one. That particular, yeah, we, that particular one right now. So we took a lot of back side roads too, and there was quite a few AMXs floating people the yard. We were off the beaten path for a little bit, so yeah. What world did you drive into? Well, we went down a dirt road, we went down a bunch of potholes, and we were with a bunch of other long haulers when we got delayed on the highway. It was pretty intense. Interesting. Some serious backwoods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Someone put in banjos in the backwoods. <laughs> I, I mentioned in my video is like this area of the country is very much a you look in people's backyards and side yards. Yeah. As you're driving yes. down the road, you're constantly looking. Oh, yeah. Because there's Definitely. treasures hidden everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. So you walk up with cash. Here you go. Exactly. You How much to buy that out yeah. of your side yard? Yeah. It hasn't moved in 15 years. Perfect. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take $1,000. Great. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. That's what I have in that pocket. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys made it. Yeah, we'll awesome. see you. We'll see you around. Take care, guys. Take care. See ya. See ya. That's the uh, the Impala SS that was with us. They stayed in the same hotel with us, um, and we were all lined up and pulling through small towns. We ended up getting picked off and separated, and we ended up getting here way earlier than they did. We had a pretty good pace. They got stuck, but they've uh, they've got the the Impala SS that had a water pump failure right before they got down here, and then they had a, a thermostat leak, so he's been kind of trying to nurse that car a little bit, make sure he actually could make it this whole trip. But looks like everything's going well, he's having a good time, so that's cool. What in the world? This thing is cool. Where are you from? This thing is gorgeous. Did you build this all yourself? My God, this thing is gorgeous. You gotta be the only one of these things here. Anywhere you go. <laughs> Anywhere you go. <laughs> what a great machine. That thing is beautiful. How cool is that thing? Absolutely. Yeah, you're definitely the only by any person that ever shows up with those. A 34 Dodge panel van. Hot rod with a 440. Very cool. Look for all the motor, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I recognize you. Yes, sir. You. <laughs> How are you? Doing okay. What'd you drive? 72 Nova. 72 Nova. How yep. are you doing so far? 96. Good. Yeah. No problems? No. Um, 496. Yeah, old okay. ninety six, old school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good with it. Got air. I just put air conditioning on it last summer, so this is a stress test for it. Yeah, it's yeah. Do, it's doing okay. I, I think can, this is my last one I'm doing without air. I can sit in traffic for about thirty minutes. Okay. And like this afternoon coming in, it done good. And then right about the time I was getting to the track, it started getting up about two oh five. Before big block, that ain't bad really. But yeah. I went ahead and cut the air conditioning all for the window now. Struggle for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, struggle for a little bit. About 20 minutes or Oh yeah. Well we appreciate that. Oh yeah. <laughs> appreciate that. You drove your AMX, didn't you? Yes sir. Oh yeah. 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 I had I was gonna I, I was gonna break the Pontiac, but the yeah. AMX it needed to be done. Yeah. It needed to I think it's more than a fan favorite. That's and that's yeah. the thing, and that's what I have to do. Like <laughs> technically it kinda I think lost. Put that one on the map, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> when he drove it on the yeah. old, old man's channel. That's where, I, that's where I found you at. I'm sure. Them, started yeah. watching your stuff too. The amount of people that have seen that car because of old man, if you guys aren't familiar with it, I'll, I'll link it in the cards. Uh, old man's garage, Bill Hoskinson, I let them borrow and, and tune my carburetor. And Kenny decided to, I guess, some com com combination of the Dukes of Hazard plus Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> Enjoy the hell out of this thing. Um, it's a great video. They had a great time with it. And then they also recently had it over there when I had to pick up uh, Vicky's vehicle. Yep. And they took it. Uh, around, they took it around their RC course that they have in the back. He has a dirt RC track, and they decided that they should probably run my AMX out there as well. So it did well though. It still yep. has the it still has the dirt and the mud up in the fender wells. It did. Oh really? Have it clean. Okay. It did good though. It does. Yep. And it's even better now because it's got a posi in it. And a five speed. Oh yeah. So So you're gonna try air conditioning on four days? Well, I don't think that car's coming again. Okay. I think Pontiac. I think I'm either gonna bring the Pontiac next year and it's gonna have air conditioning. 
or if we have the Hellcat swapped AMX done, oh. uh, that will have air conditioning. Oh, yeah. So, Hellcat okay. powered AMX manual transmission. All right. That's it was good. nice meeting you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, yeah. Good talk with you. All right. Be have careful. A good one. What do you think? So the 304 that's in my AMC right now is coming out and going in my our other AMX, the street drivable one. And I think it really should have one of these on it. Because these guys build stuff for... And they have a full serpentine conversion for it. So you can do a whole it's a billet cover, so you fold all your accessories directly to it, and your supercharger all on the same piece. So this thing can run eight pounds of boost, pick up an extra 100 horsepower, and have power steering, AC, all the other bits and pieces. It is originally an AC car, the one we're going to swap that motor into, so we can convert the entire thing over to their, their components and give it a little bit of boost, which it can handle. Not a good plan, doesn't it? Now the question is, the real question is, do we use one of these things to power a built 360 instead of a Hellcat powertrain? What do people want to see? Camera battery died, switch it over to my phone. Or do you want to see a Hemi Hellcat powered AFC AMX? What do you want to see? Let me know. Because this is definitely on the to-do list. We've already had some conversations. Good group of people. And it's all made here in America. Well, folks, that's it from Rockingham. Had a great time. Talked to a bunch of people. Um, again, please, if you want to come up and talk to me, please do so. I love having conversations with people. I promise you I am the same guy that you see on TV or you see in your phone. I'm the same guy in person, so I'm very approachable. I'm always in a good mood. I'm stuck in perpetual optimism. So come up, say hi. It doesn't bother me in the least bit. I love it. Um, we've had a great day not been without its challenges but I think we're on the, the winning side of all that um, tonight we are headed a couple more hours out of here um, so we're gonna put some miles on so we have a shorter day tomorrow to get to Charlotte uh, have a lot of stuff we want to do and we want to get to the show early tomorrow instead of rolling in in the middle of the afternoon so we could spend a whole day here or at the track on uh, tomorrow um, instead of like I said instead of getting there when half the show is already over so we'll see you guys tomorrow uh, from Z-Max Racing, the place where they do four-wide drag racing. Yeah. Um, should be a good time. If they don't make us wear helmets, there's definitely going to be a race between the Pontiac and the AMC. I can promise you that. Hopefully they make us wear helmets so I don't have to do this. But if it is, we're definitely racing those cars. Um, thanks for being here, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for supporting us. It's your views and your, your comments and your likes and your interaction with us that, that make this possible, that make us successful where we are with this kind of thing. Um, without you guys, we'd just be weird car people talking into phones, standing in the middle of nowhere. <sighs> what a day. Power tour's halfway over, though. That's kind of a shame. Lots of good memories, though. That's a lot of gauges going on in there. Well, it's because it's so fast. Okay, yeah. I need to know what goes on all the time. <laughs> all, all the things. All the things. I need to know all of the things. I love it. Hey, don't record my address. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fantastic. I've heard this thing a few times. Well, I sure hope so. It's. <laughs> <laughs> That's too loud, and we're too old.
Not the cone of ice. Yup. By the way, this banking is no joke. I know it doesn't look like I'm working hard. This is just getting into the corner and it definitely gets banked over there. That is serious banking. Another good day on Power Tour. Oh, get too old for this. <laughs> no, I'm not. Where are you going? Uh, speedy cop with the airplane. Yeah. Blue is electric fan. I'm gonna give him my spare one. Gotcha. I'll meet you back at the end. Okay. Years running the modern fuel injected. I'd say that's a wrap. From Rockingham, this is Austin reporting. Take care.